the seafarer shareholders are very important. Um, I, I'm one of them. Um, uh, I've been with the company now on an advisory role for I think a year and a half now, and the stuff I've seen is just just mind-boggling um, what we've achieved. And it's a bit unfortunate that in the in the public eye and the, obviously the shareholder basis only sees treasure, no treasure. That's all they see. While in the meantime, we've done. I mean, with so much we build a hardware platform or a drone. We build a AI machine learning backend to that that basically processes the, the data uh, in our real time and gives us the results. And all that and the, the technology alone is just, in my view, worth so much more than the current share price, which I think is totally undervalued because nobody is aware of what's going on here. Um, and then put another treasure on, on top of that and, and, and we'll be rolling. So I'm super excited about this company and I, I personally invested a, a, a very good amount um, in this company to, to make sure that we keep developing technology, we keep pushing the boundaries, we keep building better hardware, better software, uh, keep improving our machine learning algorithms, uh, and, and also keep improving our processes, our research, our whole funnel of RECs. That's really important to me. I don't want this to be a single REC company. I, want, I don't want us to be dependent on one REC. I want to have a sales funnel. If you have a sales company and you focus on one single client and this client fails, you're done. You need to have a, a funnel of, of, of potentials, and that's what we have. All right, my name is Max Tyson. Um, I am an investor. I invest in internet, or I would say technology-based companies. So my role is investor and, and supporter. Well, I always uh, loved uh, history. I always loved oceans. Um, I found it amazing to learn that the Spanish have basically raided pretty much uh, South Middle America for 300 years and then shipped um, all this treasure, gold and cultural stuff from, from, from Cuba at the end of the day to, to Spain. And that, I found that really exciting to learn that because um, it's a part of our whole, all of our culture and history. And the fact that Spain did that for 300 years um, and back then, one out of 10 ships wouldn't make it, is what kind of brought my attention to this whole story. For me, it's as much as it is a value, you, you kind of try to get back from the ocean, it's also the historical value, not just the financial value, the historical value, which I think is really exciting to bring those artifacts back to light. I've invested in tech-enabled companies for the last 15 years. Um, I started in Germany, where I'm originally from. Um, I invested in companies that use technology to gain a competitive edge over their peers, over their competitors. Um, I invested in, in Germany in companies that, that did online sales of glasses, sunglasses, contacts, and that therefore got a really good advantage over rig and mortar competition. So when I came to Florida, um, I went up to the Space Coast because I was told there's a bunch of really talented people here and there's a lot of uh, interesting companies. So I came up here uh, regularly and looked at different companies. That's when I got involved with Legacy. And I looked at many companies and uh, I didn't invest in any of them. I also met Seafair in the early days before they were basically turning into a tech company. And I talked to Kyle and made a great um, lunch meeting together with Matt. And I asked Kyle, so, Kyle told me how the process works so far. It's basically you have a Mac, you pull in a boat, you have like a thousand hits, and this, those hits could either be, well, all iron hits. It could either be a nail very up in the sediment or a big anchor very low and looks the same. So you basically have to dig up all those thousand hits. And so I asked Kyle, how long does it take to dig up those thousand hits? And he told me that it takes you know, about, you know, you could probably do, 50 or 200 a year. And so I said, well, then after, after 10 years, you know whether you have something or not. And I just basically passed because I said, this is like playing the, the, the lottery. Once Kyle then turned towards becoming a tech company with um, bringing Tim and Walt Manta on board, I realized that we could, with this technology, 
and good processes we, we use, we could um, basically take out the luck part and make it a matter of time until we, we have a big find. That's really the, the, the key point for me. For me, it has always been companies that use technology to, to just change the landscape. Um, if you think about it, a regular treasure hunter, like Stiefer has been in the past, or had been in the past, um, they have a wreck, they have one wreck, and they dig up this one wreck for five years. And after five years, they either broke or they made it. We, with, C with the Sea Searcher, now basically can trim this, those five years down to a weekend, essentially. So after a couple of days scanning, <clears throat> we can tell you whether or not there is something there or not. And that changes the, the, econo the whole economy, the whole economics of, of this um, industry. That, that's huge. And actually, at this, at this point, it doesn't even matter whether or not we'll have something in Juno. What matters is that we can just make a decision on Juno within days. We can basically fail fast. And if you can fail fast in a company, you move on much quicker, you don't waste resources, and you can just be so much more efficient. And we can pinpoint where, if any, in a wreck we have um, non ferrous i.e. gold, silver, brass, bronze, whatever. And we can pinpoint that in a wreck and can then surgically extract those materials and basically then just leave the whole wreck in situ, meaning we don't destroy anything. Well, the biggest problem is the stuff we can't influence. So anything within these walls, in our lab, the technology, we can all influence. We cannot influence the um, nature. We can't, if, this, if the weather is bad, if the waves are too high, we can't go out. If the visibility is zero, it's really hard to work. If the current, which we're actually facing right now, is five to six knots, it's really a tough and broken environment. Um, and we also can't influence the fact whether or not there's gold there or silver at any given location. But again, we can um, make this determination very, very quickly uh, and then move on. So equipment is obviously, um, I don't know if you ever had a boat or not, but having a boat, something always breaks. So equipment is really hard. It's really, it's really hard on equipment. Um, you always have to fix something, especially when you use your, your equipment um, every week, number of times. You have to, there's a lot of you know, uh, equipment that needs to be serviced, that, 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 that broke. You need new stuff, you need new engines, you need you know, all those things. So whatever we, we can Im influence, I have, I have a, we, have, we have a pretty good grip on. Anything we can influence is, is basically we have to deal with it with, with our technology and good, good processes. In my view, the reason why though this industry hasn't brought out more champions, if you will, is because most companies are A, underfunded, the B, mom and pop stores, it's a couple of people have a boat and they just go diving a few weeks in summer, and, and C, they have zero technology. They may have a Mac, which is essentially a 30, 40 year old technology, but that's it. Um, at Seafair, um, we have professional divers, we have equipment, which is this literally, you know, which we develop, which, which just doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, we have the funding and um, our professional approach in terms of our processes is just giving us a huge, huge advantage over any other treasure hunters, which I'm not going to even call competitors. Um, also, our, our whole funnel approach, meaning that we have, we have research, uh, we have um, then our first kind of, you know, um, magging and, and sea searching parts in our recovery. So we have a huge process so that we are working on three or four different wrecks or leads to wrecks at the same time, that's just a whole different ballgame. So it's, it's not, they're not even competitors, it's, it's, um, it's a, almost a different industry. Uh, it's, they're, they're, all, they're all out there for the same goal, but it's, it feels like going to a race, you know, while the others have, I don't know, a cart and a, a horse, you, you come up with a 
brand new 911 Porsche. It's like, that's, kind of, that's how this race feels. It's, it's night and day. So the potential is obviously immense. Um, when you see those people they're combing the beach and they find a couple of gold coins and they're worth 10, 20, whatever grand each, um, we are not looking for single coins. Our sea searcher actually mostly won't find single coins because we build it in a way that it looks for big deposits. Um, when you think about the, the value of um, the one wreck that had been found, um, the Atocha of Mel Fisher, I think it was in the 80s, that, that was, uh, I think it was $400 million roughly. Back then the silver was at five bucks and now we're at $25. So if you do very rough math, and again, this is not the price for the commodity, this is a different price, but just get some sort of feeling on the inflation and all that kind of stuff, you would be talking about a $2 billion rack today. Let's just cut it in half and say it's a billion dollars um, per virgin rack you find. I'm not, I'm not talking about you find some, you know, some leftover crumbs, I'm talking about virgin rack, a billion dollars each. And um, the nice thing is we basically just need a few days to figure it out whether there is something there. Um, and this is with the current technology and once we have more R&D um, budget, we can even do other other variants, I would say, of the same technology uh, and be even more efficient and build out all operations. So the total, like as a, as a venture capitalist, you always look at the TAM, total addressable market. It's, you, you don't even need to start thinking about that because that's, it's, it's in the uh, hundreds of billions of dollars um, just in US waters, probably just Florida waters actually. And if you go globally, it's just, uh, it's, but actually I'm not focusing on that right now. Right now we're focusing on finding the first few, just the first few billion dollar wrecks out there. That's yeah, so the, 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 the seafarer shareholders are very important. Um, I, I'm one of them. Um, and I'm also, um, besides that, I'm, a, I'm a, an advisor to the company on a bi-weekly basis. Uh, I've been with the company now on an advisory role for I think a year and a half now. Um, and the stuff I've seen is just, just mind-boggling um, what we've achieved. And it's a bit um, unfortunate that in the, in the public eye and the, obviously the shareholder basis only sees treasure, no treasure. That's all they see. While in the meantime, we've done, I mean, with so much we built a, a hardware platform, our drone, which is just absolutely mind-boggling. We built a AI machine learning backend to that, that basically processes the, the data uh, in our real time and gives us the results. And all that, and the, the technology alone, is just, in my view, worth so much more than the current sh share price, which I think is totally undervalued because nobody is aware of what's going on here. Um, and then put a lot of treasure on, on top of that and, and, and we'll be rolling. So. I'm super excited about this company and I, I personally invested a, a, a very good amount um, in this company to, to make sure that we keep developing technology, we keep pushing the boundaries, we keep building better hardware, better software, uh, keep improving our machine learning algorithms uh, and, and also keep improving our processes, our research, our whole funnel of racks. That's really important to me. I don't want this to be a single rack company. I want. I don't want us to be dependent on one rack. I want to have a sales funnel, it's like a, like a, and have a regular company. If you have a sales company and you focus on one single client and this client fails, you're done. You need to have a, a funnel of, of of potentials, and that's what we have. Yeah. So um, the future of Seafarer is, in my view, we are going to be a multinational. Uh, tech tech company that that's focusing in the first phase at least focusing on, on on finding and recovering precious metals from the ocean floors. I think we will be um, once we can ex expand our team our, our resources after our first find we become a a a, a company with um, with several different uh, you know fleets, I would almost say, 
that, that basically go around the globe and, and, and scan the oceans for, for uh, lost, lost treasure, be it, you know, be it gold, silver, or just historical treasure, um, and bring those back up. And I think it's going to be, um, yeah, I mean, we're just getting started.